I'm holding in my hand the most powerful consumer desktop APU available. Eight Zen 3 cores, 16 threads, and an integrated eight core GPU. So why aren't I more excited? Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and earlier this year, AMD released the Ryzen 7 5700G CPU with integrated graphics to the OEM market. However, unlike the 4000 series Ryzen desktop CPUs, the 5700G and the six core Ryzen 5 5600G are now available for retail sale. I bought this one from Newegg for $359 US and at least at the time of filming, five days later, they're still available. Like I mentioned, this is an 8-core 16-thread CPU and is built on the same 7 nanometer process node and Zen 3 architecture as all the Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. However, that doesn't mean it's the same CPU as the 8-core 16-thread Ryzen 7 5800X. While the 5700G has the same 3.8 GHz base clock as the 5800X, the 4.6 gigahertz boost clock is 100 megahertz lower, but the most significant difference is at 16 megabytes, the L3 cache is half the size of the 5800X. This essentially means the 5700G has to reach out the system memory more often to grab the data it needs, which reduces performance. Now, the big glaring difference and huge advantage of the 5700G is the integrated eight core Vega graphics operating at 2000 megahertz. This means that not only do you not need a dedicated graphics card to output a video signal, but this one is powerful enough to actually do some 1080p 60fps gaming. So that's what we're gonna look at today. We'll check out the raw gaming performance of the 5700G compared to all the or most of the other AMD APUs from the Athlon 3000G to the Ryzen 7 4700G and then we'll look at some gaming performance pairing the 5700G with a dedicated graphics card and see how it compares to some other Ryzen CPUs. And finally, we'll look at some memory scaling to see how memory speed affects its performance. Before I roll into the benchmarks, all the components for the test bench I'm using are in the description below. I did have to update the BIOS on my motherboard to the latest version for the 5700G. Also, for all the CPUs tested, I've enabled all the bells and whistles, meaning I removed all power limits, I enabled PBO, and for the APUs, I set the iGPU performance boost to extreme and increased the dedicated iGPU memory to eight gigabytes. In the case of the 5700G, this increased the TDP from 65 watts to 105 and increases the GPU frequency to 2300 megahertz. I test this way because these settings are available in basically every mid-range or better Ryzen motherboard and why buy a Corvette and never take it out of second gear? Okay, now the charts, and I've included the 4650G and 4700G for comparison, but make sure you pay attention to the 2400G and 3200G as those are the direct retail DIY predecessors of the 5700G. I'll just let these run. Feel free to pause if they go too fast.
no surprise there. If you want more info on the other Ryzen APUs and their differences, you can check out the video I did that a couple months ago here or in the description below. It suffices to say that the 5700G with its faster and more efficient both CPU and GPU cores on the seven nanometer process node is a big improvement over the previous retail 2000 and 3000 series APUs. But how does the 5700G perform when paired with a dedicated graphics card? Well, to find out, I installed my RTX 2080 Ti and ran a few more benchmarks comparing the 5700G's gaming performance to the 3700X, 5600X, and 5800X. Now, as I go through these charts, you may notice the margins between these CPUs are a bit more narrow than what you may have seen in other reviews. There are two reasons for this. The first is while most reviewers use like an RTX 3090 for testing to reduce GPU bottlenecking as much as possible, which is the standard way to benchmark CPU performance. I just don't have three grand lying around for a 3090 but I included the testing with a 2080 Ti just for a different perspective, like a more realistic perspective of, I'm gonna buy a 5700G now and hopefully get my hands on like an RTX 3070 or an RX 6800 in the future. Also, for a practical demonstration, again, all these CPUs are unlocked, so power limits are maxed, and PBO is enabled. Okay, onto the charts, and we'll start with the most CPU-intensive title, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and here we see the 3700X is 6.4% behind the 5700G, while the 5800X pulls ahead by 12.2%. Moving on to a title that tends to lean more GPU heavy, however, the section I benchmark is more balanced between CPU and GPU use, and the 5700G still falls in the same position, however, the margins are reduced. Horizon Zero Dawn is a game that effectively takes advantage of multi-threading, spreading the workload pretty evenly across up to 16 threads, as well as being GPU intensive, and because of that, we see the 5700G slightly outperform the 6-core 5600X and only very slightly behind the 5800X. Finally, Borderlands 3, which after some patches has evolved into an almost completely GPU-dependent game, and the very slim margins demonstrate that. Of course, if you increase the GPU power, those margins will increase. With an RTX 3090, I've seen the 5600 gain up to 10 to 15%, over the 5700G and the 5600X 5 to 10% better. But in my scenario, we saw 5.9% gain for the 5800X with both its faster clock speeds and bigger cache, and a 3.3% gain for the 5600X due to, well, double the cache size of the 5700G, while the 3700X dipped 2.7% below the 5700G due to its lower clock speeds in IPC. Now, on the opposite side of the note, if you reduce the GPU power, those margins will narrow until you get to a point where there isn't any noticeable or measurable change. Next, let's look at the effect of memory speed on the 5700G. We already know that memory speed affects Ryzen CPU performance, but considering both the CPU and iGPU of the 5700G both share system memory, the speed you pick will have even more of an impact. So I tested the 5700G using 32 gigabyte kits of DDR4 3200 MHz CL16, 3600 megahertz CL16 and 4000 megahertz CL18 memory. Dual channel, dual rank, and a one-to-one -one ratio was maintained for all testing. First title up, F1 2020, and memory speed appears to have no effect here. So, on to a synthetic benchmark, 3D Mark Night Raid, and here we can see the faster memory making some gains with the 3600 CL16 pulling 2% ahead of the 3200 CL16, while the 4000 gains another 1.1%. Next up is Rainbow Six Siege, and here the 3600 pulls ahead by 3.4%, while the higher cast latency 4000 MHz can't even gain another full percentage point over that. Finally, in Grand Theft Auto V, the 36 speed memory makes the biggest gain of 5.3%, but again, the 4000 CL18 only gets an extra 1.1%. So that demonstrated that both memory speeds and memory timings affect the performance of the 5700G, 
speed is definitely a bigger factor, but ultimately to me, the biggest factor is cost. Cost is why I didn't include a 4,000 megahertz CL16 kit. A 32 gig kit of that will cost you $300 or more if you can find it. CL18 is much more common for that speed and can be had for under $200, while a good 32 gig kit of 36 megahertz CL16 currently costs about $170 and 3200 CL16 can be found for as low as $130. So I would say the sweet spot price to performance wise for the 5700G, just like the rest of Zen 3 parts as well as Zen 2 is, 36 megahertz CL16. Now, if you can find 4000 CL18 for a comparable price, you'll get some gains, but that 1% or so gain isn't worth more than a few bucks in my opinion. That's all the testing I did. Well, most of the testing, I will be doing some more in-depth content creation and productivity testing with this CPU as I'll be using it in an APU only system build. I don't want to give too much away, but this 1950 Chevy pickup I saw at the county fair a couple weeks ago is the inspiration for that build. Anyway, be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss that. Now, let's get to my final thoughts on the Ryzen 7 5700G, because in the opener, I said I wasn't very excited about this CPU, and that's because there's nothing really new or fresh about it. It's Zen 3, but because of the reduced cache, it trails even the 6-core Ryzen 5 5600X. Of course, the cache is reduced to make room for the Vega graphics, but Vega. Vega is what, three and a half years old now? I mean, if we're going to keep hounding Intel about being stuck on 14 nanometer forever, it's only fair to ask AMD, why not RDNA 2? We know it exists in APU form, it's coming in Valve Steam Deck. AMD has definitely had the 5700G on the books for a long time, considering they left that 5700 gap in their Zen 3 lineup. This has been planned long before the silicon shortage. I mean, I imagine there's a reason for it. Possibly RDNA 2 underperforms on DDR4 memory. The GPUs in the Xbox Series X and PS5 do use GDDR6 and Valve Steam Deck is sporting much faster DDR5 memory. AMD is rumored to be including RDNA 2 based graphics in their 6000 series mobile processors which will also run on DDR5 memory, which is a good plan since Intel is actually beating AMD with their Iris Xe graphics on the mobile side. But maybe that's the reason this APU is what it is. Intel really has nothing on the desktop side that can compete with this. Their UHD graphics don't come close, but it would have been the perfect time with most normal gamers living in GPU hell. This is a good stopgap measure to get you gaming, especially with lower demanding titles like the one I included in the benchmarks or more demanding games at lower settings and resolution. It just would have been nice if it had that 50% or so uplift our DNA could have given it. But ultimately, who is this CPU for? Well, first, anyone who primarily does work on their PC, work that is multi-threaded CPU intensive with some demand for GPU accelerated workloads, and you either want a small form factor build or you still can't get a graphics card, then this is a great choice. In terms of raw performance for everyday computing tasks, it outperforms the Apple M1, which I've been very impressed with, albeit at four to six times the power consumption. The other customer for the 5700G is the person who's building a gaming PC and wants an eight core CPU, but can't get the GPU they want anytime soon. This will allow you to build the entire system and use it until you can get your GPU. In terms of raw GPU performance, I'd say this falls somewhere between the GT 1030 and GT 1050, and in the testing I've done, it's not a bad gaming experience as long as you're realistic with your expectations. It'll crush an Overwatch, Fortnite, or World of Warcraft and the like, but don't expect to have a great experience in something like Cyberpunk 2077. Also, it should work great in Warframe because Newegg gave me Warframe as a gift when I bought that, so I got a free-to-play game for free. I don't know. I assume it's some kind of bonus pack or add-on. I don't play and probably never will play the game, so I guess, I don't know, I can give the code away. Sure, first person to hit me up on Twitter gets the Warframe loot. But first, 
Watch these, subscribe here, hit that like, then follow me on Twitter for the loop.